In my last video, I made this force feedback steering wheel, but it had a slight problem. That issue's been resolved now, and it's working really well, but in this video, we're looking at pedals. Pedals like force feedback steering wheel come in a variety of sizes and, of course, prices. There's also plenty of DIY versions available on YouTube. Essentially, these pedals are fed a voltage, and there is a variable resistor within the pedal that you turn, called a potentiometer, and as it turns, the voltage adjusts and then this is feedback to your controller or computer to tell that software where the throttle position is. The problem with using potentiometers is it adds quite a bit of complexity to your design and it needs linkages and things like that to work. For my project I'll be using Hall Effect Sensors. A Hall Effect Sensor is just a sensor which measures the amount of magnetic force being applied onto it. So all we need to do is just move the magnet further away and closer to the sensor for the voltage to adjust and send this back to our controller. With the information considered, here's the design I've come up with. So here's the pedal I designed. It's essentially PLA sides with aluminium tubes and bolts going through the middle of them. Uh, the pedal itself has six of these tubes and bolts, which gives it quite a bit of strength. There's not too much twist in it with that amount of metal in the pedal. If you're going to make this project, I suggest you buy a good pipe cutter so you have nice square edges on your pipes. Push the pipes over the top of the bolts going through the one side but before we bolt it together we need to put on this magnet holder. This magnet holder holds the magnet parallel to our Hall Effect sensor. So we just pop that on the bottom tube and then we need to get a spring. So the spring I managed to get off these cheap clamps from the hardware store so I just smashed out the rivet and grabbed the spring. It's a pretty beefy spring so it's going to be ideal for this project screw that onto the bottom of the pedal and that's the pedal part pretty much done. The rest of it is just building the bottom half of which we need to put the Hall Effect sensor in. So the sensor just slides into this keeper and we need to just push that flat because it is sort of polarised as a north and south pole which it will detect and we just want that nice and flat. Make sure the pedal is moving nice and freely. Chuck in our wiring harness and connect it onto our sensor and then all we have to do is put the pedal face on and we're ready to race. Hello, so I have unceremoniously just uh, drilled these pedals into this bit of plywood. They're all made up now. The east tails and everything will be available in the show notes if you want to make your own. But I just want to show you the software when they're swapping between the screen capture and this during this section. But I just want to show you how to calibrate these pedals so the software needs to know um, where the minimum and maximum is and the developer of the firmware on the steering wheel has provided this tool to do it. So uh, when I look at this tool, I can turn the steering wheel from side to side and that translates um, onto the screen. So I know that the steering wheel is working and the pedals as well. I push them down and they go up and down on the screen as well. Um, so when I first put them together, it, the software had no idea what was maximum minimum for these pedals so there's just a auto cal button just click on that and the little things go haywire and you push your pedal in and it works out the um, minimum and maximum based on the minimum and maximum voltage coming out of the, the pedals and it's a 12 bit um, resolution so it's quite high so it's very very sensitive. There's all sorts of stuff on this which I have no idea of and um, this is new to me and I don't know what any of these other things do but I managed to get it working so developer if you could make a idiot's guide for the software like what everything does that would be awesome but let's jump into our program we've got the steering wheel here and it's fixed if you want to know what was wrong with that um, one of the keen viewers pointed out that the, the draw will have a hammer function on it so when it gets any load it will start hammering the nut or whatever you're trying to do undone and I just removed the spring that was in there and replaced it with a plastic collar and now it doesn't slip anymore so you'll see shortly that all that noise we had in the original video is now gone I'm not going to show you a video of me pushing the pedals while I'm driving just assume my feet are pushing on these pedals and you'll be able to see on the screen as well what's happening 
So I'm using this Live for Speed game as it's, it's free for the bit that I'm using anyway and the developer suggested it. Uh, I have used the pedals on a game called Beam NG. Uh, maybe your kids know or you know what that might be. And I'm just trying to, and it works. I'm just trying to find some other games that will work with it as well. But um, we'll start driving and you'll be able to see what's happening. So let's go for a bit of drive. If you just look down in the bottom right hand corner there, you can see this. The throttle can move up and down. I'm going to push it on the throttle obviously and on the brake as well. So we see it's working. So we go for a bit of a drive. We haven't got a paddles on here yet. The girl wants to pull itself around like any normal car, but it's going straight. These ripple strips comes through the wheel. Okay, so those pedals work awesome. Uh, the steering wheel still needs a bit of fine tuning. I think it's pretty coarse. I'm worried it's going to strip the gears inside the gearbox. Uh, and there's some, there's lots of dials and things we're going to turn up and down to uh, get it to work properly. So in the next video, we'll be working on that and on uh, pedal shifters. On Batman. <laughs>